Hello, and welcome to yet another night of Legend of the Crystal Skull stream. Ariana, on Senior Detective. This is taking forever. Like, I'm genuinely sorry if I'm just being stupid in things. <laughs> so, you know, there's so many uh, eyeballs to find, and so many convoluted ways in which to find them. I, yeah, okay, so, let's just jump right into it, shall we? Um, excellent. What was I doing? Um... Okay, um... What was I doing? Uh oh. Okay, well, let's take this moment while I'm thinking to. <clears throat> wow, I got a lot of them. Missing seven, that's cool. Um, still need to. Oh, oh, I was gonna call Bess, right? And let her know. Okay, I got this. Oh, you're right. It's Dr. Buford first. Hello? Hey, what's going on? That's funny. That's what I was going to ask you. I'll see you later. Bye. Hmm, I wonder what Nancy's up to. <laughs> Hello? What's up? Not much. What about you? Ditto. Talk to you later. <laughs> Bye. We have such a great friendship. It is very pretty game. I love it. This is Dr. Gilbert Buford's answering service. How may I help you? I need to talk to Dr. Buford. Could you maybe give me a number where I can reach him? No, ma'am, I cannot. Is this an emergency? Sort of. I mean, it's not a medical emergency. I just... See, I'm only going to be in town for a short time, and Dr. Buford and I have this mutual friend who died recently, and I just really need to talk to him about it. <laughs> Carson will be very huh? confused by the film's yes, history. Yes, I need some consoling. That's it exactly. Well, tell you what. It's against the rules to give you his phone number, but I can tell you that now that he's all but retired, Dr. Buford spends most of his evenings at his favorite gumbo stand down in the French Quarter. If you really need to talk to him, you can probably find him there. Great. Do you know the address? It's at the corner of Rampart and Domain. Oh, did you say Rampart and Dumain? I did indeed. Granny Pumpkin's Cajun cooking. They make some darn fine gumbo. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome, and uh, I'm truly sorry about your loss. My loss? That mutual friend of yours and Dr. Buford's. Oh, right. Thank you. That's very kind of you. Bye. Nancy, you need to keep up with your lies. Hi, Bess. It's me. So what's been happening? Tell me everything. Well, let's see. Since the last time we talked, I was just about getting ready to... <laughs> Interesting stuff. But the reason I called is, I need you to talk to this doctor named Gilbert Buford, who, as it turns out, likes to hang out at a gumbo stand called Granny Pumpkin's Cajun Cookin', which should be right across from our hotel. You just want me to talk to him? That's it? Nothing nefarious? No black ops stuff? He was Bruno Bollet's doctor, and apparently his best friend, too. I just need for you to see if he thinks there was anything weird about the way Bruno died. What do you mean by weird? I mean, I kind of think maybe Bruno was murdered. Murdered? By whom? That's what I'm trying to figure Wait. out. Everyone's a suspect at this point. Including what did Best think was going guy? on? Like, I don't know. Well, 
great. I'm gonna be chatting up Jack the Ripper. Oh, I'm sure the guy's fine, but be subtle, just in case. Well, I can see the gumbo stand from our balcony. <laughs> if he's the guy that's sitting down there, I guess he looks harmless. Okay, I'll go talk to him. Thanks, Bess. Let me know what happens. Cheerio! Why, hello, young lady. How kind of you to grace an old man with your lovely presence. <laughs> Are you Dr. Gilbert Buford? I'm delighted to report that I am indeed. Do you mind if I join you? Of course not. A little lively discourse would brighten this gloomy evening considerably. This here is my favorite spot in the whole city. Delicious gumbo, pleasing view, particularly now, I might add. <laughs> My name's Beth <laughs> She keeps doing the same laugh. I'd like to ask you some <laughs> questions about Bruno Bolle, <laughs> if that's okay. I'd prefer subject matter of a happier nature, but I do not want to seem inhospitable, <laughs> so what is it you want to know? Um, is it true that Dr. Bolle was going your best with the best friend? friend part. Well, now, I was certainly his best friend, but I cannot honestly say that he was mine. Fact is, while socializing with my fellow man, particularly with pretty young women such as yourself, Stop it. has always been a source of pleasure for me. Bruno was just the opposite. Unfortunately, the older he got, the more numerous his idiosyncrasies became. And the less concern about their negative effect upon others he became. Uh, his idiosyncrasies didn't bother you? Now, as a doctor of medicine, I am not only accustomed to dealing with the abnormal, but I find that I'm actually drawn to it. I, for one, thoroughly enjoyed Bruno's outlandish personality. Although, at the same time, I fear it may have played a role in his demise. You see, he died of a myocardial infarction, most likely caused by age-related atherosclerosis. Dying of a heart attack is okay. all too common for people who are socially isolated. And Bruno Bolle had most certainly become that. Did they do an autopsy on Dr. Bolle? No. Given Bruno's advanced age and the absence of any indication of foul play, an autopsy was deemed unnecessary, and the body was cremated according to Bruno's <laughs> wishes. By Krollmeister. <laughs> anyway, sorry. <clears throat> Where was Dr. Bolle when he had his M.I.? <laughs> In the foyer of his house, just inside the front door. In fact, I hadn't seen him for a while, so I picked that day to pay him a visit. I walked up to the front door, found it unlocked as usual, opened it, and there he was, lying on the floor in obvious distress. The next thing I know, his housekeeper came running in and started shrieking Sorry, and carrying on very until finally I sent her out of the room when he's so talking. she could summon an ambulance, and I could once again hear myself think. Then I... Well, let's see. Then I knelt down and saw that he wasn't breathing. So I pulled him away from the door away so I'd have more room to work on him. Well, and began let's chest see. Compressions. It's always super... I continued until the medics arrived, but nothing they did made a difference either. Um... Was Dr. Belay unconscious the whole time? Uh, yes, he was. Can you remember anything that might indicate what he was doing by the front door? I mean, had he just come in from a walk? Was he wearing a hat? Was he holding anything? Had he dropped something? An umbrella? Sunglasses? Wait a minute. Why, yes. Yes, he was holding something. A piece of paper. And on the floor next to him was an envelope. He must have collapsed while reading a letter. Oh my gosh. Do you remember anything else? Believe me, young lady, it's quite miraculous that I've remembered this much. <laughs> now, I know the letter was no longer in Bruno's hand when the paramedics arrived, so perhaps he released the letter when I moved him. 
And yet, I do not recall seeing it on the floor when they wheeled him out the door. Iggy. What's Iggy? <laughs> Iggy. Iggy is an iguana Bruno befriended, then turned loose in his home. It soon developed the annoying habit of stealing paper and stockpiling it in the vent system. Uh... Are you saying an iguana made off with the letter Bruno had been reading? It would not have been the first time a missing document ended up in Iggy's possession. Rene would periodically call me saying the lizard had absconded with one of Bruno's prescriptions and would I please write her up a replacement? In any case, Bruno once no, it's told true, me he that was seems training really sketchy. Iggy, <laughs> said he taught Iggy to retrieve the things it had stolen. All right, how do I go about all this? <laughs> Do you think it's possible that Rene caused Dr. Bollet's death by, say, hoarding the pills from those missing prescriptions and giving them to him all at once? No. Had he died of an overdose of the medications I had prescribed, the manner of his death would have been quite different. But he died of a heart attack. Of that, I am certain. However, I know for a fact that Rene is deeply involved in the practice of hoodoo. And as Bruno's housekeeper, she had ample opportunity to use it against my poor old friend. You mean hoodoo really works? Young lady, never, ever underestimate the power of suggestion. If a person believes in something, even on a subconscious level, I... fantasy can easily become fact. And who knows what rubbish Rene filled Bruno's mind with. Drink this, don't eat that. This brings good luck, that brings bad, day in and day out, even if he said he didn't believe a word of it. Who knows how much his subconscious was absorbing? He was very old and vulnerable. So could Rene have caused Bruno to have that fatal heart attack? There's not a doubt in my mind she could indeed. <laughs> this conversation took a weird turn. And this is a conversation in which I was going to Did bring Dr. up Crystal Bollet Skull. Did Dr. Bollet ever say anything to you about owning a crystal skull? Why, yes. Yes, he did. In fact, he showed it to me once. Said it had magical powers. Said owning it was going to allow him to live forever. I thought it was utter nonsense and told him so. Well, he didn't appreciate that at all. Refused to talk to me for a full two weeks. Do you have any idea where he kept it? No. He was terrified that someone would steal it from him, so he told no one its location. Not even me. Tell me, Miss Bess, what do you know about that crystal skull? This friend of mine, who is also a friend of Henry Bollet, you know, Dr. Bollet's great nephew. Anyway, while she was visiting Henry, she saw this book in Bruno's library about the legendary crystal skulls and was kind of intrigued and thought that since oh. Henry <laughs> said that you were pretty much Bruno's only friend, maybe Bruno had said something to you about it, and as it turns out, he had. That's all I know. I <laughs> uh, see. Well, much as I'd like to believe that skull holds the key to immortality, I'm afraid Bruno's passing proves it's worthless. Not Although it would make an attractive murdered. paperweight, as I recall. Tell your friend not to give it another thought. So? I hear that you're a member of the Jolly Rogers crew. Is that true? Perhaps I am. Perhaps I am not. I'm sure someone as charming and attractive as yourself Stop has it! Her share of secrets, too. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> Be that as it may, just what is a crew? Crews are organizations whose primary just, like, purpose is to same. put on parades <laughs> during Mardi Gras. Each time, they also but it, put on fabulous parties. It feels They're like it's her her fake laugh of only. I'm really uncomfortable Some that I'm being to be private polite. <laughs> Secret societies is a term others have used. However, back in the 1990s, the city decided not to issue the Jolly Rogers any more parade permits unless they opened their crew to pretty much anyone who wanted to join. So, refusing to be blackmailed, they chose instead to simply not put on parades anymore. As far as the city is concerned, the Jolly Rogers no longer exist. Was Bruno Bollet a Jolly Roger too? Perhaps. Perhaps not. I've bugged you enough. Feel free to drop by any time. Okay. 
Oh, I'm, I was getting ready to back out. and I hate doing this with a touchpad. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. Hello, Bess here. Oops, looks like Dr. Buford decided he's had enough gumbo. He's not at Granny Pumpkins anymore? Nope, but here's what else I've learned since I talked to you last. And that's all she wrote. Excellent, thanks for the report. Stay in touch, see ya. Okay. Iggy! Oh, Iggy! God damn it! Why wouldn't I... Okay, because I probably need to learn about the loquat thing from, from Renee, or Henry. Probably, probably Renee. <laughs> yeah, feel free, feel free to drop by anytime. God. My money is definitely on Renee. Hello again. Were you in the house when Dr. Bollet passed away? I Dr. was indeed. Passed away. I was in the library cleaning when <laughs> all of a sudden <laughs> I heard a big thump. I hurried out to investigate, and sure enough, there was Dr. Bollet lying by the front door. And as I rushed over to him, the door opened and in walked Gilbert Buford. He took one look at Dr. Bollet and hollered at me to call 911. So I ran back into the library and did just that. When I came back out, Gilbert was leaning over Dr. Bollet, listening for breathing, I suppose. And then he started pushing up and down on his chest. But it was too late. Even I could tell that Dr. Bollet was gone. Okay, well, um... How was it that Gilbert was able to just walk right in like that? As you yourself discovered, people around here seldom lock their front doors during the day. But you know, in the back of my mind, I have always wondered about Gilbert Buford showing up at the door at that exact moment. Okay. I'll leave you to your potting. Take care, hon. I've been trying to figure out who it is that, that she reminds me of. Because it's, it's been bothering me. There's, there's someone. Yes? Okay. Did you know that Bruno was a member of a group called the Jolly Rogers? No. Should I care? Maybe not, but I care. They apparently ran around wearing skeleton man costumes. Don't know anything about it, sorry. Uh, I'll check back with you later. Sounds good. Then... Why can't I summon the Igmeister? Devil. Iggy! Oh, Iggy! <gasps> Hall of... All right. Ow! Yay. Okay. Let's see. Got all the things. Let's make him... So cute. Okay. Now. Go. You're free. Bring me back. Oh, let him go. Icky's the best. Alright, what's this? Dear Dr. Bolet. <sighs> Complete my review of the data gleaned. Anyway. Uh, I wonder if I'm in. Okay. 
authenticity the two of you requested. My analysis showed that the skull, while made of remarkably pure crystal, was carved using modern instruments. In layman's terms, the skull is a fake. <gasps> Again, thank you for allowing. <laughs> I don't know if we're supposed to be like shocked or something. I, I don't. I don't know how we're supposed to feel about this letter. Basically, um, like, were we expecting there to actually be like a real crystal skull? And w what? What's going on in Nancy Brain? <laughs> now I gotta go get my little quads. Don't spill, baby. Little quads, little quads. Drag, drag, God bless America. Can't drag it and do this, God damn it. Drag. Why are you doing this to me, computer? Loving duck. In windowed mode and ow, okay, I need out. I need This is so distressing. I can't This isn't even me being bad at this. This is just short on account of wasps? I'll explain later, okay? Right now, it kind of hurts to talk. I never thought I'd hear myself say this, but Nancy, you really need to be more careful. No, duh. Okay. The problem is I don't have a freaking port for my mouse. No, I couldn't just back away. I was trying to back away. I did try. What the? I don't know what to do. <laughs> Stay 
dead. Just stay dead. Stop freezing up! I'm going to briefly turn off my camera because I need the port for this mouse. <laughs> because there's no way. Ugh. No freaking way I'm doing this. Okay. So, here goes the camera. <laughs> guys couldn't see that. Damn it. <laughs> I don't want to bug Damn those it. wasps again unless I absolutely have oh, to. Okay. Switch over. You guys couldn't see my look of um Oh, you know what? I guess I could have just switched over to the camera on my uh I'm built into my Oh god damn it. <laughs> Could have switched over to this one. <laughs> Whatever, man. Okay. Nope. Went the wrong way, Nancy. No. <laughs> Stop. It's mad at me for unplugging it and... these I'm just gonna switch over to the shitty camera nobody cares anyway this part doesn't matter um, okay I'm sorry I'll go back to the window so the music in the background Nancy, won't you just pick a few at a time? Oh, no, that's okay. See how much easier that is? I keep looking up there.
but now there. Now save my game. Wasp fighting Drew. Iggy, how about a nice juicy loquat? Opens every Jolly Roger meeting. Opens me. Uh oh. How are we gonna find that out? Oh, let's call the authenticator first. <laughs> yeah. Is this Milo Research and Technology? This is Chad Milo. Service forwarded your call. To myself. What do you want? Are you alright? I'm at the gym. <laughs> on the treadmill. Ask the girl who's spinning Mom's around back. in circles in a secret room. Well, about the letter you sent to Dr. Boulay, you know, where you told him the skull was a fake? <laughs> I was just wondering... I never told him that. Never told him what? I told him that skull was authentic. No, you said in the letter the skull was carved using modern instruments. <laughs> I said, all the tests I ran... Proved the skull has been hand carved and hand polished. Probably took decades to make. But the letter Dr. Bollet got said just the opposite. Th then the letter he got must not have been the letter that I wrote. Are you saying the crystal skull is real? Hey, I'm not <laughs> what happens saying if they it's magic it. or anything. I'm just terrible. saying it wasn't made using I'm 19th century, it. 20th century, or 21st century technology. Did you carbon date it to see how old it was? This thing was pure quartz. No carbon in quartz. No carbon, no carbon dating. Hey, look, I'm gonna hang up now. If I try to talk anymore, I'm gonna pass out. Oh, wait, one, more, one question. more question. Did you send that letter saying the skull was authentic to anyone else? No, just Dr. Bollet. I heard he died recently. Good thing I build him up front. Yeah, well, thanks for your help. No problem. Collapses. You killed a man, Nancy. Hi, Bess. Listen, you busy? Uh, why? I need you to do something for me. What? I need you to infiltrate the meeting of the Jolly Rogers crew that's about to be held at Rampart and Dumain, which has got to be right near Zeke's. You're gonna have to look around for it. Now, to get into the meeting, you'll need to put on that skeleton you know, costume playing the drinking you saw game. in the back room. Does this and count in as meeting, being told to do something? Name that's Nancy telling Bess so you who's gonna be you is, to do something? Okay? I'm counting no. it. Beth, I know you don't like to do stuff like this, but this is really, really, oh, really man. important. And it'll be the last the gumbo thing I truck's to do, gone. I I'm so sad. Genuinely sad. I did this last time. Absolutely, unequivocally, irrefutably, incontrovertibly, no. Which, of course, actually means yes, because if I don't do this, I'll be stuck here by myself until you give up. They that recycled dialogue? Will never Because that's what she up. says when, when... I don't suppose it would do any good when to Nancy convinces her to go shop is closed. poison Lamont. Oh, and if anyone at the meeting asks, the password is Scuttled Bones. Okay, I'll give it a shot. That's the spirit. Scuttled Bones.
she learned this from watching Nancy. It's very hard to see. <laughs> What's the password? Password? Right. It's not necessarily uh, let's see. The uh the best animation, but it's really I don't know. It's nice. It's it's very pleasant. The all of all of the uh, animation in this game. Scuttled, Scuttled bones. bones. <laughs> Better hurry, we're just about to start. Oh, okay. Jean Lafitte! Jean Lafitte! Jean Lafitte! Jean Lafitte! Jean Lafitte! Welcome, my fellow Jolly Rogers. You know we have several pressing matters to discuss this evening, so let us begin. As you may or may not have heard, certain city officials are attempting to deny us the right not only to gather in public places during the Mardi Gras season, but they have I'm also just in here seen realizing fit to Shoot, I forgot spend to a reason I ever do a yeah, casting of these, these games. <laughs> I would definitely have to say Keith David as Dr. Beaver. <laughs> Where did that noise come You're from? I'm not gonna make trouble. You're making a, a big deal out of nothing. Can't we just talk about this? Where are you uh, me? I don't like this being in my it's ears. Like it's very unpleasant right now. Why, it seems our trespasser is of the female variety. <laughs> Let's have a look. Will we find out some terrible things about Dr. Buford? <gasps> That's right. You know me and I know you, Dr. Buford. And I also know that you were the one who attacked my friend over at the Bole Mansion today. And if you don't tell me why right now, I promise you, you are going to be in one big world of hurt. <laughs> the young lady's clearly upset about something. Clarence, take over the meeting while I try to find out why she's making all these crazy accusations. They're not crazy and you know it. Shh, shut up. <laughs> I will tell you everything, Miss Marvin, in private. No, I don't want to be in private with you. And he did. He told me everything, Nancy. I bluffed him into confessing. You would have been so proud of me. Oh, and before I forget, the name they chanted at the start of the meeting was Jean, Jean Lafitte. Jean Lafitte. Great. Now, what did Dr. Buford tell you? Okay. First off, he said that with his dying breath, Bruno <sighs> Bollet directed him to steal the painting of Henry's parents and lock it up in Henry's parents' crypt. Bruno seemed to think that way, Henry would wind up with the crystal skull instead of somebody else. So Dr. Buford dressed no! up in his skeleton Sorry. costume, stole the canvas, and hid it in the crypt like Bruno asked. That must have been when Renee saw Mr. Death. But then, Dr. Buford had second thoughts and decided to hack with Henry. He wanted that crystal skull for himself. Oh. So this afternoon, he dressed up in his skeleton man costume again and snuck into Henry's house so he could get the key from that mini cemetery and retrieve the painting he'd left in that crypt, knowing the painting would somehow lead him to the skull. Only I walked in on him and ruined everything. Right. And now that we're on to him, he says he no longer wants the skull. <laughs> he's a that he allowed his superstitious side to get the best of him and says whoever finds the skull is welcome to it. At least I feel like if this was Buford real life, said. it'd be like, he doesn't uh -oh. even want the skull anymore. Uh -oh, what? I told really? Him you were looking for the skull. You, That's you believe right. that? <laughs> Actually, I told him you were on the verge of finding it. Why would you tell him that? I don't know. I got carried away. So if he lied to me and he really does still want the skull, then he might come after you. He left right after we talked, and I don't think he went back into that meeting. What if he's on his way over there? Don't worry, I'll be fine. Why don't you just... Whoa, 
that bolt of lightning was huge. Anyway, why don't you just go relax and I'll be back at the hotel before you know it, okay? No. You Bess? Were, you were fine, by the way. Hello? <laughs> Bess, you there? Nope, she sure isn't. Let's go get one more little pot. Just real quick, I know I'm supposed to be doing the box thing. That's not, I know I'm gonna need the other shit, so. Come and get it, Iggy. <laughs> oh, you're so cute. Now let's make you a scary little clown. What? How dare. Ha <laughs> ha. Oops. Quick out of the window. All right. Be free, my Iggy friend. How is it spelled? Anybody? Thank you. Much obliged. All the way around. Five. There are still five. <laughs> Icky off to terrorize children in Maine. Here, Iggy, Iggy, Iggy. Took off with my glow pot, you little bitch.
Yes? I'll stop bugging you now. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Oh my gosh. Oh. Hello again. I think I found the letter that Dr. Volet was reading when he had his fatal heart attack. Iggy the Iguana had taken it. Apparently, Dr. Volet did have a crystal skull and believed possessing it would make him immortal. So he had it tested, and the lab sent him its findings in this letter. Read the second paragraph. My analysis showed that the skull, while made of remarkably pure crystal, was carved using modern instruments. In layman's terms, the skull is a fake. My guess is Dr. Boulay believed Why in the did... skull so completely that when he read it was a fake, he was totally devastated, and his heart just stopped. But what I don't quite understand is, why did you tell me you didn't know about the crystal skull when this letter indicates you did? All right. Dr. Boulay told me about the skull. As you said, he believed with all his might owning that skull was the reason he was still going strong at 9 to 5. I lied to you because, well, for one thing, Dr. Boley swore me to secrecy. And for another, he kept the skull hidden. And up until just this minute, I wanted to be the one who found it. Oh. Do you have any idea where the skull's hidden? None whatsoever. Oh my, this makes me feel just terrible. You see, getting the skull tested was my idea. When Dr. Boley told me about it, I was skeptical and that troubled him. So I helped him find a private laboratory where we could take it, so any and all doubts would be dispelled once and for all. I, <laughs> I can see Uma Thurman. I can kind of see Uma Thurman there and, 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 uh, and dying like, like that. All that. I... Well, now that no, I I'm do thinking know of, that I the know. skull's a fake, I can stop fretting over its whereabouts. In fact, I should probably thank you and Iggy for setting me straight. I can't tell. Oh, good. You're gonna go on the straight and narrow. I'd better get going. Thanks for coming by. Okay. Um. I don't know why I'm looking like it's gonna help. <laughs> Lovely though. Not, I don't know, man. Where am I? <laughs> I'm 
I'm just I'm just gonna, I'm just here for the clicking because I have never been any good at this puzzle. Honestly, I think after we figured it out like the first time, we wrote it down in our Nancy Drew notebook and never had to figure it out ever again. We just went wait 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 okay. there is someone who does like it, then I am very happy that they had this moment. You know? Even if the rest of us were miserable, I'm glad that they had this moment. Because they're... I don't know, man. I hate this puzzle! So that's what it's supposed to be. I'm never gonna solve this one. <laughs> you guys enjoy just sitting here listening to me click at this? That's what I'm trying to do. No, no, this is literally just one of those ones where you're supposed to figure it out. Which head moves which ones in which direction. It's, it's like, uh, like the, um, the columns one in, um, Tomb of the Lost Queen. You can't see what's happening, you're turning things, and anyway. It's a stupid puzzle. <laughs> And I hate it. Because it's not oriented to things that I'm good at. <laughs> Need glasses on for this. <laughs> Plus side, 
just this this whole little scene here just the rain falling and everything in the the entire background and the ambient noise like I wish I wish I could just have this be the thing that I, I see when I want to calm down like I just bring it up on my phone <sighs> no that's nice just just on the edge of a graveyard in New Orleans. I'm good. Rain all over. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it's at this part of the game every time that, um, Risa would start to get really mad. Like, she was just furious. And so, like, I'd just hold on to the, um, the laptop and, and just click away at things while she furiously wrote down and tried to, tried to figure it out. So, the rain helped me. Give me your eyeball. That one's pretty. I do love his, his whole eyeball collection. Less fond of that one, the big old pupil. And... Also less fond of that one. Okay. I don't remember what that's going there. Here, do that. <laughs> no, stop it. Okay, so I'm still missing one eyeball. Where is it? Where is the eyeball? Feeling like I didn't check um, Bruno's bedroom very well. No, it's not like one I can find over there. Jesus. why she was going that way to get to his room. That was a weird thing I did. <laughs> Making sure I definitely took eyes from everywhere. Oh, I'm gonna eat more cocoa. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I got the eye from the model. I mean, I'll, I'll go check again, but I do recall doing that. Um, I don't know. I don't know why being her shit. Hmm.
No, that's not what I wanted. Different like that. Yeah, I got that. Oh, I didn't. I was trying to get away from you. I did you. Get away from me. Like, there's nothing else, right? Yeah, I got the one in the gumball machine, definitely. Because I got the coin that did it. So clearly I got that one. Thought I might have, but I couldn't really be sure. Because there's just somewhere that I've, I've over there's somewhere I've overlooked. All of those. I, yeah, I did the spider. Because I did the one to... Right? I swear, I know I did it. Because, yeah. Yes? I'll stop bugging you now. Awesome. <laughs> Hello again. Nice talking to you. Take care, hon. I'm really nervous. I'm hoping that this isn't right, but remember how when I did this puzzle, you know, like I went to take the eyeball and, and then it wouldn't go, and then I backed out and it was closed and I wouldn't go back in, and I was like, oh, I really hope I didn't fuck up. Because then I wouldn't be able to finish and I'd be really upset. I'm tempted to like... Oh 
yeah, I thank you. I was actually just going to look at the... I was like, I might just go look at Game Boomers and see what... Because I think they usually list, like, where you find that stuff. At least I hope they do. spent until I've driven myself crazy. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> okay, so anyway. Okay, but I thought I did everything with the spider. What about what am I missing? Like uh, oops, that's the case of Stop it! I- wait, I did the one from the jack-in-the-box! I wrote it down and- What you guys? I'm starting to think I didn't do it. <laughs> okay. Okay, I got the eyeball, guys. Play Freebird! I like the slightly tense music.
I don't know what's wrong with my brain, you guys. I really genuinely don't. Okay. Cantankerous. Out here were the sea stricken pirates of plenty of the food and left. Unless I'm missing something. Um, their large stomachs empty. Down to the port will plunder some dinner, but the truth is that these pirates could have been thinner. Their villainous vessel was bought down by booty. They would drop off the treasure and away they'd be scooting. They would foul up the village, make a great mess. Down to the mangroves, they'd surely digress. Ah, uh, it's a beastie. Swim for your lives. The calm seas, treachery, left a surprise. <laughs> anyway, um left a surprise. Long we would use to use either of the spots and treasure and hold down below. And this curious nature would not let it go. So we tore down the hall, now alarmed for the pirates. He started to look down. <laughs> I think I missed some rights. I'm feeling fairly certain. Um. Shoot. Okay. It's just. <sighs> Sorry. Straightforward, then, right? Um, out here were the sea stricken pirates of plenty. A week's worth of loot and left their large stomachs empty. Down to the port for plunder some dinner, but the truth is, the pirates could have been thinner. Their villainous vessel was bogged down by booty. They would drop off the treasure and then they'd be scooting. They would foul up the village and make a great mess. Down to the mangroves they'd surely digress. Oh, it's a beastie swim for your lives. It's calm seas treachery left a surprise. Left. A long-legged beastie whose eyes were a goal had spotted some treasure in the hold down below, and his curious nature would not let it go. Okay. Mm. Uh, so he tore down the hall. Onto the pirates, he started to break down the structure inside it.
I'm definitely missing something because there's no looking to the right. So, um... I can make sure that I'm fucking getting them. Okay, okay. Oops, sorry. I got really into this. Okay, so one through five. Right. Stalking them, famished and anxious out of hunting. Yes. Waters, he was cantankerous. Uh, out. Out. Here were the sea stripping pirates of plenty, a reason of Luton left their large stomachs empty. Okay, so I can only find three in there, which means that I'm missing two. <laughs> Anxious out in the hunt, out hunting west, waters he was contemporaneous. Um, out here where the sea stricken pirates of plenty, a week's worth of loot when they left their large stomachs empty. Um, I do want help, yeah. Um, because. one in here. is never an answer. Well, why wouldn't it be as in looking... I don't want to do this then. Um.
not dealing with this anymore. I'm not, I'm not playing. <laughs> thing I already have all of those parts because Nancy Sticky Fingers Drew Ready for this. Don't. All right, you good there? Okay. Peeling. All right. Yay! I like that I'm doing two day games in a row where I just absolutely adore the animation. <laughs> okay. It was lovingly animated. So it was take forever to do every little Yeah, what on earth have you gone and done? The lid's um, closing, and I don't know how to yeah, stop. Yeah, there's not a here, lot of time. Up. Toss what you're holding up here, then give me your hands. Come on, you best hurry. Here it comes. Nancy's so fucking trusting. Renee, a little help, please. <laughs> the crystal skull. After all that scheming, how do I finally get it? Why this nice little Yankee <laughs> you're girl just scree. hands it to me. Scree. Renee, help scree. me! Hurry, please. Thank you, Nancy. Bye now. And suddenly it speeds up. No, you've got to help me. Renee! Renee! Uh-oh. Nancy's going to die. Oh, fudge. Okay.
again. Why can my brain? Okay. Stop. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Glad this isn't super duper time sensitive. Oh, wait. defense. It's very hard for me to see that right now. What does all tiny... <gasps> Footprints! And she the gate open. What the hell, Renee? Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Renee, hold it right there. That skull isn't yours. Yeah. To say nothing of the fact that you just tried to bury me alive. Yeah. Murder. <laughs> It wants to be mine. Yes, I did my share of scheming to get it. I got Dr. Olay to go to the authenticators, then switched the letter they wrote saying it was real with one I I'm wrote not using saying that camera right fake, now. <laughs> in hopes that Dr. Olay would just hand it over to me. Yes, my plan failed. And yet, here we are. I have the skull. Go Why? back in closer. This, there it we go. This is great animation. Destiny. This, I love this. Bruno Olay wanted Henry to have it. That's why he had Gilbert Buford steal that painting and hide it in Henry's parents' crypt. Because he hoped that way Henry would eventually find it. Henry is a fool. If he ever got his hands on this, he would just turn around and give it to that trashy girlfriend of his. Her eyeballs are going all wonky. He just like... wanted it because he was terrified of dying. Gilbert Buford, too. And that Lamont fella, he just wants to sell it to the highest bidder. But me, my motives are pure. I am going to so it can rendezvous with all those other skulls. I'm going oh. to right there when they start conversing and all the mysteries of the universe are forever solved. Bye now. Oh, oops. So I was busy getting really into the animation and I forgot. Okay, let's try this again. Renee, hold it right there. That skull isn't yours. To say nothing of the fact that you just tried to bury me alive. The skull <laughs> is mine. It wants to be mine. <laughs> no, I missed my cue, okay? okay? I fucking I got, got it. To go to the authenticators, then switched the letter they wrote saying it was real with one I wrote saying it was fake in hopes that Dr. Volet would just hand it over to me. Yes, my plan failed. And yet, here we are. I have the skull. Why? Because it knows that I will fulfill its destiny. Bruno Bollet wanted Henry to have it. That's why he I, okay. had Gilbert can we Buford get to the steal part that painting and I hide it in hit. Henry's parents' crypt. Because he hoped that way Henry would eventually find it. Henry is a fool. If he ever got his hands on this, he would just turn around and give it to that <sighs> girlfriend of his. Dr. Bollet, he just wanted it because he was terrified of dying. Gilbert Buford, too. And that Lamont fella... He just wants to sell it to the high bidder. I did it, bidder. guys. Me. My Fucking save the pure. day. <laughs> I am going to protect it so it can rendezvous with all those other skulls. I'm going to be right there when they start yes. conversing. Did you see me do the that? the of the universe are forever solved. Ah! Genuinely, she got to that part in the monologue. I was like, huh, I could have sworn Bernie comes no, in at this point. No, no, come back. That alligator will live forever. Renee burst into tears and sobbed as Bernie swam away with a crystal skull. It made me feel <laughs> yeah, sorry for I her saved for the about day. two seconds. After all, while she I may not have meant to a, cause a Bruno's Bernie. death, 
She certainly meant to cause mine when she left me sealed up in that crypt. It felt good to turn <laughs> it over to the police. Later that night, Dr. Buford came Aww. over and apologized for knocking Sad me out with that smoke bomb Woody. and for allowing himself like, to think, Woody even for a story. moment, like that, that Bruno's crystal skull was Cloth anything more arm. than a pretty piece of quartz. To make up for his shameful behavior, he insisted on taking Bess and me on a grand tour of New Orleans. I'll bet he Seeing did. Seeing the city through the eyes of someone who loves it as much as Dr. Buford was truly special. He invited Henry too, but Henry declined. He was still trying to process the fact that his great uncle wanted him to have the skull. Henry always thought that to Bruno, he was nothing more than an annoying family no. obligation. Someone Bruno couldn't care less about. Your grandfather yeah, was freaking. I'm sorry, Buford your uncle was his dying breath. Like Bruno, in his nineties, when he died, Apparently, so he was probably in his like late eighties when he got you. So sorry. Such things out loud. As for Lamont. When he heard what old. Happened, he closed his shop, bought enough marshmallows to fill a swamp boat, and has been scouring the bayous ever since. That's deeply concerning, every though. He comes to in hopes of finding Bernie and the crystal skull inside him. But well, Bernie like, has destroyed yet to turn his life. Up. Maybe the skull didn't agree with him. Maybe swallowing it caused him to stop associating the sound of a kicked log with yummy sweet things. No, no, baby. Case, the whisperer has disappeared, lost to the world once again. Which is totally fine by me. It's fine by you? You waste all that fucking time trying to look for it? Marshmallows! Alright, let's see. What? I did find an Easter egg. The fuck is this? Aw, oh, screw you. Y'all heard it. Y'all heard it when the chicken went cluck cluck. I found a goddamn Easter egg. All right. Well, whatever, man. Talk about a detective's dream come true. The Italian police called me personally and requested that I <laughs> travel to these guys? Italy and help them stake out a suspected thief in Venice. Unfortunately, what started out as a simple assignment in a city filled with canals, gondolas, and romance quickly morphed into a full-fledged undercover operation. And I soon found myself trapped in a maze of lies, disguises, and danger. A labyrinth Help of lies. Help me find my way out by joining me in my next adventure. Phantom of Venice. Okay. I was wondering when she was going to say it. Okay. Well, Reese is going to play that one on Senior Detective. I already played it on uh, Junior Detective. So, whoo. Okay. That was the Fortnite saga of Ariana trying to play a simple game. So, um... <laughs> Scopa! So, um... Yeah, uh, I don't know what Reese is going to be playing next week. Um... Yeah, that was very bad Photoshop. But the, the, the Italian officers or whatever. Anyway, um... I was cheated by a book. <laughs> oh, you're going to start? Okay. So, Reese is going to start uh, doing Wolf Among Us starting tomorrow. So, come back then and Risa will play. I, I don't really know much about the game. But anyway, it doesn't matter that I, that I don't know. I will know after she starts streaming. Anyway. All right. So, uh, thanks, guys, for sticking with me. I appreciate the support. <laughs> probably shouldn't be supporting me through this. This feels like you're enablers, so good on you. Anyway, <laughs> you guys have a good weekend. I'll see ya. Bye.